I wish I was a cabin boy aboard a man of war. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. Pretty work, brave boys. Pretty work, I say. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. Hi, I'm Samuel Siegel, Executive Director of the Schooner Pursuit Historical Society. And today, I'm here to talk to you about Privateering 101 and what the SPHS is all about. But before I can tell you a bit about the SPHS and what we do, we must first go back 240 years ago to when privateering was a necessary thing to do. It was November of 1775 when the first rumblings of privateering became known to Congress. Soon after, the colonies took action themselves and gave Congress a reason to pass the bills officially authorizing privately armed vessels to aid in the cause of liberty. March 25, 1776, the bill was passed, and it was reported in the Philadelphia Gazette two days later. On April 11, the first two congressionally licensed privateers set sail from Philadelphia. They were the schooners, aptly named chance, and Congress. What followed was a booming, lucrative industry that fueled the cause and brought much wealth, fame, and fortune to those in search of adventure on the high seas. So successful for the cause of liberty, across the Atlantic, King George took notice as his losses rose, much to his dismay. Early in 1777, King George was issuing letters of mark to his citizens and by May, Loyalist privateers were entering the war from the West Indies. Fast forward to 2016, when a small group of reenactors, eager to learn about this forgotten part of the war, came together with the idea of starting a mobile living history museum. The Schooner Pursuit Historical Society was born, and we tried to bring our 110-foot twin-mast schooner up from St. Augustine, Florida. That part of the dream didn't work out so well, but just as it was 240 years ago, privateering is not without risk. Since our creation, we have set our museum up at various events and festivals, showing the various aspects of privateer life during the Revolutionary War, from both rebel and Tory perspectives. We perform various demonstrations for onlookers and are known for our black powder demonstrations as well as our participation in historical battle reenactments. What we do not have yet is a permanent home to showcase what we have learned, but that will be on the way as soon as we can muster it. Till then, we will pitch our camp where we are invited around the region where it all took place between 1775 and 1783. We have new exhibits that we are incorporating into the setup, so each time you come visit us, it's a different experience. We are introducing the privateer timeline of the Revolutionary War into the mix, as well as trying to bring our whaleboat home to add to the experience. More exhibits are also still yet to come. What we really need are people to volunteer to help get involved behind the scenes, as well as historical interpreters ready to play the part. Families, individuals, men, women, children, crew, passengers, assigned units, press sailors, and vendors. There are almost endless possibilities that we can bring back to life. There's a lot known and a lot yet to discover. So come on, take a look, join us, and help us in keeping history alive. Thank you.